Thank you. Welcome. Thanks. Um, now, this is on the wrong part. So I need to go here from try and slide. Okay. Can you all see my screen okay? Okay, it's okay. It's all right. That's perfect, perfect. Okay. Well, thank you very much for inviting me to participate in your international convention. I'm honored to have been asked to share some challenges and opportunities that have come about as a result of the new situation we find ourselves in as a result of the coronavirus worldwide. So I'm gonna be looking at transformational leadership development, the challenges and opportunities that are presented in this new environment, mainly because a lot of the, uh, a lot of the um, previous- Should I introduce you first? Oh, sorry, sorry, I just went straight in. I do apologize, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. J'attends ton feu vert, Akram. You are live. OK, super. Bonsoir, bonsoir, cher Diamant. Bonsoir, cher conférencier. Bonsoir, cher assistance. Vous qui êtes avec nous ce soir à notre deuxième jour du Congrès international en ligne du développement personnel et professionnel organisé par le Cercle des Diamants sous l'égide de « Transformant notre présent ». Bienvenue, je réitère la bienvenue à, à toutes les personnes qui nous ont rejoints pour assister à, à cette conférence de ce soir sur l'ensemble de nos canaux de diffusion, aussi bien Zoom, Live Facebook que YouTube. Nous réitérons aussi euh, nos remerciements à toutes les personnes qui ont contribué de près ou de loin à la bonne organisation et au bon déroulement de, de, cette, de ce congrès-là. Et puis, nous renouvelons encore une fois nos remerciements à, à tous nos chers sponsors, partenaires qui ont cru en nous. Nos chers sponsors, partenaires, je citerai Vivo Energy Maroc, je cite Business Innovation, je cite Challenge and Success Consulting. Nos partenaires médias, je cite Blanca Presse.ma, je cite Tijil Massa Presse et je cite également c'est une masse à presse TV. Merci encore une fois et merci de rendre ce congrès une réussite. La conférence de ce soir sera dédiée à la thématique globale du leadership. Du leadership qui aujourd'hui n'est plus un luxe. C'est inélectablement une obligation, une nécessité indispensable, aussi bien pour le développement personnel et professionnel que pour la transformation du présent. Comment le leadership pourrait-il transformer, ou bien comment pourrait-il être une attitude puissante qui va conduire à la transformation de notre présent dans plusieurs domaines Comment le leadership pourrait-il être un accélérateur, un catalyseur de transformation de notre présent pour transformer notre futur Comment le leadership, ou bien comment le développement du leadership transformationnel pourrait transcender le simple changement transactionnel pour aboutir à une transformation positive et durable. À tout ceci et à bien d'autres aspects aussi percutants répondra la conférence de ce soir sous la thématique « Transformational Leadership Development Challenges and Opportunities ». Le développement du leadership transformationnel défi et opportunité. Pour en parler, nous avons choisi pour vous, chers assistants, nous avons choisi le représentant d'une entreprise la plus couronnée au monde, la plus couronnée de succès au monde en matière d'informance, en leadership. Il s'agit de LMI Incorporated, Leadership Management International, l'entité qui, ça fait maintenant deux ans consécutifs, qu'elle a obtenu le rang de numéro un mondial en matière d'accompagnement en développement personnel, professionnel et organisationnel. Nous avons choisi pour vous son représentant, ici présent avec nous ce soir, M. Yann Dawson, l'exécutif vice-président de LMI Incorporated. Il est également exécutif vice-président de l'entité Success Motivation International, SMI, et il est en charge du développement de LMI 
sur plus de 54 pays sur les quatre globes du monde. Aujourd'hui, nous avons également prévu un bonus pour vous, chers assistants. Nous avons un deuxième représentant de Elémi, un représentant de Elémi au Maroc, Elémaï, Maroc. C'est M. Hassan Kani qui est aussi également avec nous aujourd'hui. Il est le master français de Elémi au Maroc. Il a accepté favorablement notre invitation et a bien voulu nous assister ce soir pour mener à bien la séance questions-réponses qui sera ouverte juste après la conférence de M. Yann Dawson. Une conférence qui sera donnée en anglais, mais la diffusion YouTube, elle permettrait la, la traduction avec le sous-titrage à la langue que vous désirez. De toute façon, vous, que vos questions soient en français, en anglais, ou en autre arabe, on est là. M. Hassan Kani va euh, nous, nous, nous aider pour recueillir fidèlement l'ensemble de vos questions et les transmettre fidèlement à notre cher conférencier. Merci encore une fois d'avoir voulu, d'avoir accepté notre invitation, M. Yann Dawson et M. Hassan Kani. Euh, merci d'être avec nous ce soir. Euh, uh, welcome once again, Mr. Dawson. Welcome with us tonight. And, uh, and I will say, uh, the stage is yours. Okay, well, thank you very much for that introduction. Uh, can I commence now? Okay, sure. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much indeed for inviting me to participate in your international con conference. And I'm honored uh, to have been asked to share some challenges and opportunities that have come about as a result of this pandemic. So I'll be talking to tonight about transformational leadership development, those challenges that have arisen and the opportunities that are there for us to take. So with that in mind, um, I'd like to continue my slide presentation. Uh, and talking about this coronavirus pandemic, from a health perspective, it's been terrible. But from a leadership point of view, it has accelerated changes that were inevitable in the long term. These changes have challenged lo leaders globally all at the same time as a result of this worldwide pandemic. Now, a lot of people have had very negative reactions to the situation because it's been so overwhelming all at one time. But what has emerged from it is either you, are, you have an organization of, uh, that's producing uh, challenging leaders or you just have a group of group thinking followers. Um, who are basically um, wallowing around, not really knowing what to do next. But what has emerged is that it's no secret that companies now need leaders more than ever before. So the challenges have challenged leaders globally at the same time and with the same impact. Now, what has really become quite apparent is one challenge that has come about quick, quickly, and, and this happened shortly after the pandemic broke, was that the old command control styles of leadership were absolutely not effective any longer. And it didn't matter where you are, that kind of leadership was just not effective, okay? So a new style of leadership that had been talked about in the past and written about it to quite a large extent had, but had not really been embraced by the current leadership was needed right away to break right away due to the, the lockdowns enforced by governments, which means that a new style of management and leadership was required because people were no longer meeting in an office. They were actually having to work from home because of the new rules and regulations. And this had an impact not only on leadership, but also the employees as well because it meant that they were now in a strange environment, an environment where you don't have a sign on the door anymore because you're having to meet like we are now over Zoom. And for many people, this is very uncomfortable for them because it means that you have to try change the way that you present yourself, the way that you communicate and the way that you interact with the people that you lead. What was interesting is that in 19 sorry, 2019, uh, many companies, 
uh, here in, in the United States spent a large proportion of their budget on training. $166 billion was spent on training in 2019 here in the United States before the pandemic. But what was interesting is that so much money being spent was actually not even measured in terms of the results. And so it was in a way squandered. It was what I would call edutainment, educational entertainment, which was being provided uh, to employees as a kind of reward, but it really didn't have any measurable results. And that explains the question, why is there such a substantial gap in leadership, qualified leaders now, after spending $166 billion, you would think that there wouldn't be a problem, but there was and is. So the challenge is if so much money is being spent on training, why is there so little to show for it? Why is there such a substantial uh, gap in qualified leaders worldwide? So if we have a look at that gap, 93% of managers say they need development on coaching employers, employees. So they need to learn how to work with employees and coach them. They know how to issue directives and that sort of thing, but they don't know how to coach employees. And yet the strange thing about it is less than $4,000 a year per organization is spent on leadership development. Now there's a difference between training and development. Development is where you get people to be able to think and act on their own and behave in such a way. Training is get, getting people to just do things the way you told them to do it. So there's a big difference. What is also interesting is that 77% of organizations are experiencing a very definite leadership gap. So that's two, more than two thirds, nearly three quarters of, 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 in fact, over three quarters of organizations have a leadership problem right now. Okay, that's huge. And 56% of the organizations that were researched say they're not ready to meet the leadership needs in the organization because they don't have the tools with which to develop their people. So it really is quite a crisis. And the biggest gap is between the current leadership and the younger talent. Now, current leadership have the experience, the know-how, the knowledge, but they're not always IT savvy. In other words, they, they're not, they don't like Zoom. They don't like using uh, computers. They have a, a, a resistance towards that to a, to a large degree. Whereas the new younger talent, that's where they live. They live in the uh ether they, they they love to text they love to communicate that way not so with the older leadership so for organizations to succeed in this new environment this gap has to be closed it has to be bridged somehow it was important before but now that we've experienced this COVID, where we're having to live apart work apart it's now become vital so how, let's have another look at this. Let's look at this problem with leadership development. As we know, and many of us have experienced this, in a world where budgets are now very tight and, and people are really watching closely and carefully how they spend their money, at the same time, they're finding that competition is still there and it's still fierce. And what's important now is return on investment is so much more important than it's ever been. You can't squander money. So the common practice of companies today is to bring what used to be of the yesterday before the COVID was to bring in a trainer or a coach for uh, one day, two days, maybe three days of training with their team. But here's the problem. During those few hours of meeting, there's not much discussion or participation, just lectures on the basic principles of leadership and ideas about leadership. And what happens, we know that when you, and it may even happen during my talk right now, it, after about 20 minutes, people's attention span starts to wander. So what happens in these day or two day or three day 
uh, sessions, events, uh, people start to suffer from overload, information overload. And that kicks in for most employees. And little, if any, information is actually remembered or acted upon. And what's interesting is that according to information released by the University of Waterloo, people forget about 90% of 98% of what they learn just after one month. So you can imagine you put people into expensive three day events for, for, for training. And then after a month, they've forgotten most of it and can only remember 2%. And of that 2%, how much would that, how much of that 2% would ever get actually applied and then the application be measured for the efficacy of that training. Well, what research has shown is that 90% of CEOs, that's chief executive officers, believe that current development initiatives have any, well, that they believe that they have no clear impact on their businesses. Only 10% believe that they do. And yet they're quite happy to spend $166 billion on this sort of training. Doesn't really make sense. Why, why spend uh, all that money for maybe a one to two percent boost in knowledge and maybe that amount of application? Is it really worth it? I would, I would, I would, I would, I would uh, say maybe not. Maybe that's that can't be done in the future. People, if they really are in a tight spot, which many companies are due to this pandemic, they have to spend their money really wisely. So more and more unqualified employees are being thrust into leadership roles with prior understanding of what successful leaders need. And what is even more alarming is that an incredibly small number of leaders believe that the leadership training they have received or that they are giving at the moment is even relevant. Most of it is irrelevant. So there's the challenge that leaders and managers are crying out for more development and the opportunity is if we can give them something relevant they will take it up in a heartbeat they will they will jump on it um, and that's that's important to remember so there's no time to waste whether we want to admit it or not the workforce that we are facing now that we're seeing now is aggressively changing every day uh, 75% of the workforce will be millennials will, and the leadership, when I say it's workforce, it's not just workforce, leadership will be uh, millennials by the year 2025. In fact, it's almost at 55% right now. So that means that this new group of leaders, they want different, they have different needs and aspirations to the leaders of the past. So the leadership that we have now and that's been in place for years, is soon going to be gone. There'll be a new group of leaders to take over. But are the question here and the challenge here is, are those leaders prepared? And if not now, when will they be prepared? It's really time to act now and to prepare the leaders of the future now. Now, because of the pandemic, many people have said, well, it's kind of difficult to, to spend money on developing leaders. Why don't we wait until things get better? Well, my answer to that is a bad decision is better than no decision at all. Sitting on your hands and waiting is not going to achieve anything. All it will do is get you deeper into a problem. So even better is to start now and start developing your up and coming leaders in your organization. But it's the kind of leadership development that you need that has to be really looked at. The old, trans, uh, the old transactional leadership style which is, I'll show you what to do, I'll tell you what to do, you go and do it, and you'll become successful. We will get the results. That kind of leadership is not as effective as is required now, because underlying all of that is we say that your habits of thought dictate your habits of action. So if you're used to behaving in a certain way, and you just told to behave in a different way and shown to, 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 to act in, in a different way, that's not necessarily going to get you to do it for very long or certainly not in the long term. And the reason is because your thinking hasn't changed. Therefore your action and behavior is unlikely to change. 
So if you want to have leaders develop, you have to start working with them as individuals and working on their habit of thought, working on their, the way they think so that you can help them act and behave in a way that will give you the results you would like to experience. What is also interesting is that in the research, 84% uh, of organizations have already anticipated a shortfall of leaders in, in the next five years. So in other words, the old guard is not being effectively replaced by the new leaders. And that is a problem, but it's also a wonderful opportunity if you can develop those leaders in the right way. So companies need leaders, leaders need development. What was interesting is uh, Deloitte's conducted a survey that included two and a half thousand business and HR leaders in 94 countries. That is very extensive research. And what they found was, well, what they did was they asked uh, these business leaders around the world to decide which of 12 different global trends are the most important and require the highest urgency. Out of the 12 trends, four that were selected all had to do with filling the leadership gap that has become so evident in companies around the world. And uh, let me show you the, some of the findings that they found here. If you look at the top, the number one issue was leadership. It was the most urgent and important. 86% of the companies identified that leadership development was the most important and urgent needed. But if that's the case, why aren't they why aren't they dealing with this the correct way? If companies know they need leaders and leaders must be developed to embrace the always changing needs of the 21st century businesses, and now the, ch the changes that have been accelerated through this pandemic, why aren't they developing their leaders to, to fulfill these roles? It's a good challenge and it's a good question. Well, let's look at the realities of, of this. The fact the facts are that companies are having a hard time preparing for the future. And this really comes about for the traditional leaders. These are what we call baby boomers. They're retiring every day. New leaders are having to step up and take on the roles that might, they might not be adequately prepared to fill. And the reason for that is that they've been trained, not developed. You know, you can show someone how to do something, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they want to do it. They may want to do it a different way. They may not even want to do it. Okay. So these are questions that have to be analyzed and looked at. Are we putting the right people in the right places? Are we developing in the right way? So what we found, and in, in this is research found, is that those are, that are required to step up and not being trained adequately to do so. And this is misusing money and wasting precious time for companies all over the world in every industry. So this can come about as a lack of training, a lack of experience, a lack of goals, a lack of desire, or a lack of personal development. And what we're seeing is that turnover right rates are rising, costs are skyrocketing. And in the process of people coming in and out of businesses rapidly, um, it does affect morale, morale decreases. In a company that's stable and people are happy and are, are, are being recognized and can grow, those companies are doing exceptionally well. So ultimately, companies will be forced to close their doors and thousands of people will be out of jobs if they do not elect to change and get involved in transformational development. Transactional development is really for showing people how to do a job, but it's not teaching them how to be a leader. So this massive gap stands between where leaders should be and where they currently stand. And, and, and the, you know, I don't want to alarm people, but if this gap is not filled on a personal level, companies will suffer the consequences. So we're looking at a mental shift because when we're talking about transformational change, we're talking about changing the way people think to change the way they act and behave to get the results that they want. So, what we're looking at develop is development over pep rallies. Pep rallies are really where people get involved in fun kind of activities um, where they do fun things and it's called, you know, leadership development. 
Um, a lot of the information is good and a lot of the exercises are enjoyable. But what are the results? They, they're usually a very, what, what I would call edutainment, the educational entertainment. They don't really come up and measure the results. They don't have a fixed goal in mind. It's just there to um, stimulate the thoughts of, of the people that they're dealing with. Now, that may be a, a very harsh way of putting it, but think of a lot of the, um, the, the coaching and development uh, events that go on, the, the motivational speeches and talks where thousands of people go to a stadium and listen to a very motivational speaker. What the speaker says is usually great. They're really good at putting the message across. But those people walk out the stadium much the same as they'd walk out after a football game. It was, it was entertaining at the time, but they remember very little of it. Uh, what they do remember is soon forgotten. Definitely, if they can remember 2% of it after a month, it's a lot. So companies have to move away from quick fixes, which cost a lot of money, and as I said, our entertainment, to true leadership development, which takes time and involves a process. If you think about how you learn to do anything, it was over a period of time with a lot of repetition, spaced repetition. Uh, if you learned to drive a motor vehicle, you didn't just get into the vehicle and become a very effective driver straight away. You have to practice at it and practice at it until it became automatic action. You didn't have to think. Most of you don't have to think if you have to drive somewhere. You just get in the car and you drive there. Um, you, especially nowadays when you have... Uh, um, GPS that can take you where you're going, you just follow the instructions, you're thinking about other things rather than driving. So that's what we're talking about is where people are, are developed to the point where they don't have to think too much about what they're doing because it's so drummed into them. It's become so intuitive that they are acting um, out, of, out of automatic cues, really. If you think about how complicated it is to drive a motor car, fly an airplane or whatever. If you practice that and learn it and you internalize the, the method of how to do that, it becomes automatic action, especially in times of crisis. So that's what the ultimate goal is to get people to change the way they're thinking through true leadership development. And uh, the difference is that the key to leadership today is influence, not authority. When I was talking about command and control earlier on, that was referring back to uh, just do it, do what I say, don't argue with me. That's the command control, it's authority. I'm a manager, I'm a leader, you have to do what I say. Um, when you're working from home, how, do you, how, do you, how could you possibly do that? If, you, if your workers are not even within arm's reach, they may be miles away, hundreds of miles away. Or in this case, I'm talking to you from Texas. And most of you are at least 2,000 miles away from me. So I have no authority over you. But if I could influence you, if I had the right, if I had to lead you, but I'd have to learn how to do that. So leaders, leaders gain influence through their qualities, not their position. Leaders are always constant learners. Leaders have to keep up with what's going on. And leadership and learning are indispensable to each other. So if you're not constantly being developed, if you're not constantly learning and keeping up pace with what the, the changing environment, you're going to fall behind and you're not going to be an effective leader. Leaders also today have to be able to inspire the people who report to them to achieve maximum potential. So in other words, the greatest leader is not necessarily the one that does the greatest things and is the expert and the, and the, and the best at, at whatever it's going on. The leader is the one who gets things done through other people. And as Ronald Reagan said, he is the one that gets, to, gets people to do the greatest things. Okay, so what is leadership today? In the past, where position or title was the main requisite for becoming a, a prerequisite for becoming a leader, that's simply not the case today. Um, behavioral change through consistent development is the order of the day. And in a study done by Gallup, employees uh, 
that rated their management low on approachability. That's the in the graph there you'll see is um, one and two. Uh, only had a combined uh, engagement level of five percent. Now I'm not sure if you're all familiar with the Gallup, um, the Gallup research in in terms of engagement, but there are three categories. There's a, there's engaged, which means that people are willing to go the extra mile to get a result. Then there's uh, not engaged, which is people that just go to work eight to five to get a salary. They'll do what's required and, and, and no more. Then there are people who are disengaged. They are people that really not, not uh, they're not keen on, on well, they're, 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 sorry, the, the engaged people go to work eight to five and do what's required, no more. The disengaged are those people that go to work eight to five but do as little as possible for as much money as possible. They're not really concerned about the outcome of the business or organization. They're more about just getting what they can for themselves. And then they're actively disengaged. Are talking down the business. They're complaining all the time. They're complaining about the management, the leadership. They're complaining about the company. They're complaining about everything. Now, if you have a look at that graph there, where they have managers who do not get involved in developing uh, personal and business goals. And it's interesting that they say personal and business goals, that, that the, the level of disengagement is huge. I mean, you're looking at 65 and 30, 65% are actively disengaged in those companies. Between 47 and 65% are actively disengaged. In other words, they are very unhappy and, and unhappy with the organization. Uh, between 33 and 50 percent are not engaged at all they, they just go there to work get the money and go home do as little as possible for as much as possible so what what the study is really saying is that if a manager or leader helps employees set performance goals for the, them personally as well as professionally and can link the two especially if they can say well if you can achieve these personal goals this will be able to help you in achieve this person, this other personal goal that you've, you've identified. And they get them to identify a personal goal in the context of the business goal. Those people are, the 94% are either engaged uh, or when they say not engaged, in other words, uh, the 40%, sorry, 54% will be engaged. They are going the extra mile. That's over half of the business, the employees are, are really doing the best they possibly can. There's going to be 40% who go to work, get the money and go home. But if you look at the difference between uh, managers that do work with the employees, that's the number five. And then those that are not doing it at all, uh, you can see that the difference is enormous. And I think that this is starting to become very apparent in the, in the COVID 19 pandemic era where managers don't know how to lead their people that are working from home and the people at home are not sure how to work from home and be productive and so that's creating a big big problem but it's also creating a big opportunity think about what business leaders need and want uh, it's pretty easy to identify this they want increased productivity and engagement from people working at home they want that they need to have enhanced communication because they're having to communicate through emails, uh, maybe over Zoom, things like that. Um, they need to have their employees have an increased focus on priorities. They need um, these people to be retained. So they want to keep the good key peer personnel, but to do that, they have to develop them. They, they need improved teamwork and they need to manage the productivity of others. So those, those were that's pretty standard and, uh, and looking across the board, across the globe, those would be things that managers and leaders are mainly interested in. What's, what Traditionally, what resources were available in the past and to a large extent still are available is things like seminars and retreats, online videos and, and online courses, um, motivational speakers, um, books and articles, uh, social media and continuing education. 
Now, when we talk about online courses, these are online courses that you do just by yourself. There's no real input from anybody else. Um, these have good information quite often, but as we've seen, measurable results from these resources are very limited. And here's why. The traditional approaches, as I said, have, have good information, but it rely, but the, the lie is that knowledge is power. That's not true. Knowledge is just information and only becomes powerful when applied to get measurable results. So often these resources are exciting. If you have a look at here, the, the, the interest and the retention over time, uh, you'll see that there's little long-term retention and that's due because there's, there's little follow-up, limited follow-up, very little application, no, no measurable results usually. And what then happens is over a period of time, they forget, like I said, after a short period of time even, uh, maybe even a month or two, you're down to 2% retention and, and very little measurement on return on investment. That's the traditional approach. Well, what do we need now? What we need now, a new approach, and this approach is, is different. There's the old approach. The new approach is uh, to have information shared over a period of time, and it's being applied at the time of learning. So it involves interactive workshops on the job application. It requires spaced repetition, the same way as you learned how to drive a, a motor vehicle or, or ride a bicycle or anything that now has become a habit that you can do without thinking. That's the kind of approach that is required and it needs to be linked to measurable results. Okay, so instead of the traditional approach, which is let me tell you what to do, you do it now and you'll get results. Uh, that's all theory. And unless people change the way they habitually think, as I mentioned, uh, they're very unlikely to change the way they act and behave. So that's being observed now very clearly with employees having to work from home, which is a totally different environment from working at the office. So before they can become effective and productive at working at home, they have to change the way they think and act. So employees need to change that as well. And a lot of people have uh, misunderstood things. Um, they've always thought of management and leadership training and uh, as we only deal with those people. But what is happening now is in, in, in businesses, uh, you need to have leaders and managers all the way through the organization. And what I mean by that is uh, you need to not only embrace transformational development of leaders and managers, but also employees. Because you need people, especially if they're working from home, think about it. If they're working from home, they have to learn to manage and motivate themselves. They learn, have to learn how to lead themselves before they can become effective and engaged employees. How much more could be achieved if everybody was on the same page and using the same process of transformational development? It would be enormous. So leaders throughout the entire organization are needed now more than ever. Companies who have embraced this factual truth will succeed and those who have not will fail. And looking at these up and coming leaders, the younger leaders uh, that are going to take over the leadership role in, a, in, in, in more significant numbers than ever before, what are they looking for? Well, 72% of millennials and Gen Z want to start their own business. Only 16% would prefer a corporate environment. That's because of the corporate environment being what it is now. But if that environment can change, those numbers would change and they would rather stay within an organization that is embracing their needs because then they don't have to take the risk of going out and being an entrepreneur on their own. And the risk is huge. And uh, they, a lot of them can fail and a lot do. But for that environment to be correct, they must have an opportunity for growth and they ha have an entrepreneurial spirit, which means they like to be leaders and managers of themselves, but they need to be directed in that, in that way. So these people are willing and able, and I've had the privilege of working with a number of, of these millennials and Gen Zs, and 
I'm astonished at, at when you have the right approach, the, the productivity of these people is unbelievable. But they want more responsibility. They want to grow. They have an entrepreneurial spirit. They want to lead themselves. They want to make a difference through uh, their work and have meaning and measurement. They enjoy working remotely. That's a big thing. Now, if you think about it, so many um, of the, the people outside of the millennial and Gen Z era, a lot of them struggle with working from home. But even those that are millennials and are working at home, some of them have young families. And working from home needs a whole different discipline than working in the office. Because a lot of these people are having to work at the office, at least at home, and educate their, their children at the same time because of the lockdown and schools being closed. But they have to learn, they need help in becoming more productive in this new environment, but they are willing to learn. They're very willing and open to learn. So what can companies do? So leadership and development, as I mentioned before, becomes, really begins with learning how to lead, learn, how to lead and manage oneself. And as I mentioned, too often we think of leadership development as only for those who have reports uh, report or answering to them. And that's all traditional thinking. And it's more aligned with the industrial command and control thinking. A successful company of the future is one where every employer is a leader by first being a leader of themselves and then growing into becoming a leader of others. So at the end of the day, companies have uh, three choices. They can either grow and adapt through the development of their employees into leaders, or they can wait to, to make a change and fall deeply behind. That's sitting on their hands and waiting for events to change before they start to change themselves. Or they can decide not to change and eventually shut their doors because they just won't be in the right marketplace. So, I was told I wasn't to really go more than 20 minutes, and I think I've overshot that. So um, if you would like a white paper that covers this presentation and more, you can email me at that uh, email address, and I'd be very happy to send you one, uh, and I'll send that, you know, by email to anyone who is willing to, who would like to learn more about that. Um, and with that, I'll hand it over back to you, Fatima. You need to unmute yourself. Many thanks, Jan, for your excellent presentation. Many thanks. It was brilliant, and um, the subject is, uh, is very, very interesting. Thank you very much. I will give just a, a short uh, sum up of your, your presentation, and then we will uh, um, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll have some questions for you. OK? okay. Sure. OK. Euh, je, je tiens à remercier vivement notre chère conférence de ce soir pour la brillante euh, présentation qui nous a délivré euh, un sujet d'actualité, euh, un sujet au, au centre des préoccupations actuelles. On, on parle de changement, mais de transformation du présent, mais ce qu'on a bien compris, c'est que cette transformation-là, elle ne pourrait pas euh, s'opérer si on n'active pas le, le levier de leadership à travers ce que nous faisons. C'est sûr que nous aspirons aujourd'hui à, à de meilleures situations, plus plaisantes que celles euh, vécues actuellement. Euh, ces résultats-là auxquels nous aspirons ne pourront pas peut-être être là si on n'active pas ce, ce levier de leadership dans notre façon de penser, notre façon d'agir. L'idée est de créer une coupure entre les anciens schémas traditionnels de réflexion, les anciens schémas euh, de, je dirais, de, de, des anciennes attitudes euh, qui conditionnent nos, nos anciennes actions. L'idée est de créer une coupe avec ceci pour pouvoir euh, 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 tendre vers de nouvelles façons de penser et d'agir. L'idée est de euh, développer au maximum ce leadership transformationnel qui aura un impact durable dans le temps. Pas uniquement un impact éphémère euh, limité à, à quelques petites... Euh, une petite période de temps, mais une transformation qui est durable. Et M. Yann Daoussan a développé beaucoup d'aspects qui sont relatifs à cela. J'ai également apprécié la dimension humaine qui a été accordée à ce leadership. On ne pourrait pas prétendre à, à ce qu'on lead les autres, à ce qu'on motive les autres, 
avant qu'on qu libre nous-mêmes et qu'on motive nous-mêmes, qu'on soit nous-mêmes motivés. Et puis, dans notre vie, effectivement, il y a pas mal de choses on devrait, euh, sur lesquelles on devrait s'attarder pour pouvoir effectivement revoir, la, repenser et revoir la façon de, de penser et, et d'agir. Je ne vais pas trop m'attarder là-dessus. Je vais céder la parole à notre cher Hassan pour la séance questions-réponses. Et là, on éclaircira euh, encore plus euh, le, la vision euh, et on répondra plus précisément aux questions de notre chère assistante. Merci beaucoup encore, Sir Hassan, d'avoir accepté de, de modérer cette partie-là, questions-réponses. Merci Fatim Zara. Thank you again for a great presentation and uh, insightful uh, uh, studies. So we have a number of questions here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, some of them are in English uh, and I will translate uh, the French one and also uh, the English one. Uh, one of the questions is about Uh, with working online process, many leaders are facing difficulties in engaging and motivating their teams. Mm -hmm. Any more advices? Yes, uh, that, that can I answer that. Yeah, go on. Okay. Um, yes, that is a very, very big challenge that has come about due to this uh, new environment. And it's something that's not going to go away because I think what many companies are discovering now is that. This remote, or this remote office environment is going to be something of the future. It's not going to go away because they're saving so much money um, in terms of transport, office space, and so on. We're seeing those changes taking place. But as you say, it's very challenging uh, for managers that have not been developed to work with their employees or their reports um, at an arm's length. Fortunately, I've been doing this for over 20 years, so I'm, I don't find it difficult at all. And for, for a while, I didn't understand why people were having difficulty with it. But the, the, the reason that people are having difficulty is because they're not operating out of this, off, off the same page. Um, for example, you've got workers at home. If you're a manager and you have uh, the reports that are working from home, Um, they have challenges that often the managers don't take into account. Um, for example, they may not have an office. Maybe they're having to work off their kitchen table. And as such, they're right in the center of the home. So you've got animals, children, uh, maybe even neighbors and people coming in and talking to them, uh, distracting them when they would normally be at work. So new, new rules and um, new habits have to be Uh, developed to take that into account and to be able to understand their their the issues that their reports are facing and then just be able to work with them to set goals and to be able to uh, communicate with them how best to work. It may be that they would have to have more flexible work hours instead of the traditional eight to five. Maybe they have to work um, At different, at different hours of the day. Maybe they work for two hours in the morning, three hours in the afternoon, and another two or three hours in the evening after the kids have gone to bed. This kind of flexibility, though, is not usually acceptable in the office environment because you're expected to be there and work from eight till five. And you have a lunch break, you have maybe a couple of coffee breaks, but that's it. Well, people are finding that working from home they're really challenged because some people are working much longer hours uh, because then, and they're not have, giving themselves breaks. There's a whole lot of new dynamic that, that's in, in force. But to do this, you need to be able to not just, you can't train people how to do that. You can't coach people necessarily how to do that. They have to discover that, that themselves. They have to become personal motivators and personal managers of their time. And that's where this transformational development is required as opposed to the old traditional ways of, of training people. I don't know if that fully answers your question, but it really does need a totally new approach as opposed to the traditional approach. Thank you, Ian. Uh, I try to group some questions. There are mm -hmm. two or three questions about gender leadership. Uh, can you say a word about this? Uh, 
differences between men and women in workforce and how this will be affected uh, by transformational leadership? Um, I, I, yeah, I guess, I guess I've never really taken that into account in a sense. I mean, obviously there are differences in terms of um, in terms of needs and so on, but generally speaking, I see that and have seen this for some time now that as far as um, leaders, female leaders and managers and male managers and leaders, there's not, there's not a lot of difference in the sense that of what they're trying to achieve. Um, people write a lot about emotional differences and so on and so forth. But I'm finding that, um, that that's not such a big issue anymore. Um, I think you do need to take into account, and that's really what transformational leadership does, is it takes into account individual um, needs and goals and preferences. And then the manager or leader helps that individual achieve those personal goals and i think that's the difference is that it's not just all business goals it's a combination of business and personal so when you do that uh gender doesn't really become a big issue it, it's as long as the person can achieve their personal goals through achieving the business goals gender and all that stuff really falls away but leaders and managers need to know how to do that and uh, to meet the needs of the, the, the their employees. Uh, so it's a combination of personal and business goals. Uh, too often businesses just talk about business goals and they say, well, when you walk through the door and come to the, to the, to the business, leave all your personal life behind you. We're not interested in that. We just want, you, we own you from eight till five. So don't talk to us about your personal life. That's very unrealistic nowadays. Uh, that's really old, old thinking. If you can help people achieve their personal goals by achieving their business goals, you have a fully engaged and motivational group of people. It doesn't matter their gender. Um, there's a, a question about post-pandemic uh, work. Uh, do you think when people come back to work, uh, uh, as usual, after the pandemic, they, this will demotivate them because they, I guess, they used to the old way of working from home. I, I don't think so. I think what we're going to find is a blend, uh, a blend of companies, uh, employees working, uh, I would say most probably most of the time from home and some of the time at the office. Um, we're seeing this already in the United States where um, employees now, they used to work five days at the office. Now they're working maybe one or two days at the office, sometimes only half a day at the office and the rest of the time they spend at home. And I think what will happen is companies will, will, and organizations will develop their own blend that makes the best economic and productive sense for their employees. But I believe it will be a blend of working from home and working at the office. Uh, the office kind of thing will be more for developing relationships than than anything else because it's difficult to, to develop relationships uh, at a distance like we're having to do right now. Um, it's it's more difficult to develop a, a relationship and a meaningful one that way. Um, so to introduce the human element, I think the companies will still have people to come into work, but as to how much time they'll be at work in the office is, uh, and as opposed to at home will depend from company to company and from business to business and industry to industry. Great, thank you. Um, uh, uh, I think this is, we have two more questions. Uh, what is the best road map to follow in order to implement leadership as a corporate culture pillar? Say that again. Uh, what is the road map, if any, uh, to integrate uh, leadership as a corporate culture pillar? Oh, okay. 
Well, as I mentioned before, I think the, the, the essence of new leadership development will be transformational leadership. And, and the process there is it begins with uh, each individual learning how to manage themselves. So when we say that, it's, it's managing themselves to make the best use of their time and to become responsible for their time and accountable for their time. And that time need not be a linear period of time like eight till five. It could be blocks of time and so on. So that would be the first step is helping people identify how to manage themselves effectively and, and to, to be, you know, increase their productivity as a result of self-management. Uh, people talk about time management, but you can't manage time. You can only manage yourself. And so that's really what I'm talking about is learning how to manage yourself for the highest level of productivity. The next level would be to learn how to motivate yourself to do the things that you may not like to do and to make the best use of your time doing it. So that would be the next step is um, personal motivation or um, personal leadership. And that's what I was referring to when I was uh, talking about uh, people learning how to manage and motivate themselves or learning how to lead themselves then, you know, as, as, as individuals. Then from that, the next step would be those people that are now moving up the, the, the corporate ladder, so to speak, is to learn now that they've learned how to manage and motivate themselves would be to learn how to manage and motivate others using what they've learned and the same process that they've used themselves. Then the, the final step would be um, getting involved in uh, strategic planning, not just for the company, but also for themselves in the company. And you'll notice that the theme here all the way through is whilst they are also learning how to do things for the company, they're also learning how to do things for themselves. So they're learning how to develop themselves, how to motivate themselves, how to motivate others, and then how to develop a strategic plan for themselves. Uh, and I think this is really important in the company that they work with, because if they can't do that, they'll leave. And that's where you start losing people uh, that, that you've invested a lot of time and effort into because there's no strategic development plan for them or no strategic role for them within the company in the long term. If they can't see a future in your company, they'll look for it elsewhere. Okay. Uh, a couple more questions also. Um, there's a question about how can we develop our leadership not only in offices or work, but also in our daily life? I think I kind of answered that in, yeah. in the previous uh, answer. Uh, as the, the, the real true development is, is when you're developing yourself as an individual at the same time developing yourself to be effective within the industry or the organization. The two go hand in hand. Um, I think this is all what we have as questions. Uh, um, yeah, there's an, a last question. Uh, it's about motivation and leadership. Uh, how you will motivate yourself when you are all the day locked down at your house? Well, that is a very good question. Um, I don't know what I did then, but I must have ended my slideshow. Uh, which is fine. Then I'll stop sharing and I'll answer questions. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, stop share. There we, there we go. Um, yeah, that's just just repeat that question again. Uh, if you are locked down uh, all day in your house, how can you motivate yourself? <laughs> well, that's 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 actually quite a good question because. Yeah, in lockdown, what you do is you have to look at, well, where, what, what do I want to achieve for myself when I get out of here, when I can get out of the lockdown? You see, if you're just always thinking of the present and not the future, it be, you can become very despondent because the present might not be what you would like it to be. But 
what we do is it's called uh, envisioneering, which is where you envision the future and you think about where, what you would like to achieve in the future. What would, what would be an ideal situation when the lockdown ends, which it will do. Uh, where would you like to be? What would you like to have? And then those become your personal goals. And then you say, well, if I could achieve, if I can, if I want those goals badly enough, what can I do in the business to be paid to get the money to be able to do those things? And that's when you become engaged because you're marrying your personal goals to your business goals. And as you saw earlier on in that research, managers who helped employees uh, identify how they can achieve their personal goals through achieving the business goals, they had a 54% engagement as opposed to the managers that didn't had less than 2% engagement. Okay, great. So, so, so we'll, maybe we will end with the last questions or question. Um, it's, let's, it's kind of definition question uh, from Reda. What does leadership mean to you in a practical way? It's an open question. <laughs> <laughs> to me personally? Yeah. Well, leadership to me, and, and I've had to do this now for, for more than 20 years. Leadership to me is getting, getting things done through other people. Um, I, sit, I sit here in Waco, Texas, and, and the people that I work with are, for example, you, Hassan, in, in Morocco. I mean, you're, you're a long way away from me. Um, and then I've got people in Western Europe, in the middle of Europe, uh, people in Africa, New Zealand, all over the world. Well, leadership to me is being able to encourage them and help them to motivate and manage themselves to get to realize their goals but at the same time achieve their personal business goals as well as the, the, the goals of the organization overall. And if I achieve that, and, and how, do I, how do I measure that? Well, I measure that by the results that everyone uh, is achieving. If someone is not achieving their personal goals, that's of real concern to me because they'll soon, soon become demotivated and will look for something else. But if they're achieving their personal goals, uh, and the only way they'll really be able to do that is if they're achieving their business goals. When we're doing that throughout the organization, then everybody is winning and everybody's succeeding and the organization just grows and grows. That's good leadership. If that's not happening, then it's not good leadership. Something's breaking down somewhere in that, uh, in that formula. Okay, thank you very much, Ian, for this insightful uh, uh, presentation. Um, And I will let the floor to Fatim Zahra now. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, Hassan, pour ta brillante modération. Merci d'avoir assuré si bien donc, cette séance qui est son réponse. En tout cas, encore une fois, nous tenons à remercier notre cher euh, conférencier pour la, la brillante conférence de, de ce soir, pour les brillants propos apportés. Et, et puis, nous, nous remercions aussi nos, nos, notre assistance d'être euh, d'avoir été présente avec nous et, et passant jusqu'à la fin pour écouter les les réponses de, de notre invité de ce soir. Je pense qu'avec ceci, donc, nous, nous venons à terme de notre conférence d'aujourd'hui. De, de, euh, merci beaucoup pour tout. Merci, merci beaucoup pour toutes les, tous les apports qui sont là pour pouvoir contribuer à donner le maximum d'outils pour pouvoir euh, avoir un leadership euh, transformationnel qui se développe au fil des années, qui commence par soi avant de se propager aux autres, qui commence par soi et qui mûrit dans le temps pour pouvoir donner un maximum d'impact positif et durable. Merci pour tout. Et pour la clôture, je vais donner le mot de la fin à notre cher Souliman pour dire un petit mot avant de diffuser notre capsule habituelle du cercle des diamants. Très bien. Merci beaucoup, Fatem Zara. Many thanks, Yann, for this presentation. It was brilliant. Uh, you, you show us how to, to lead people in this uh, special moment of pandemic. So it was very interesting to share with us the statistics and how we have to prepare ourselves for the future, for to, to prepare future leaders. It was very, very interesting. Thanks a lot. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. Yeah. I appreciate that greatly. Well, thanks, Hassan. Hassan, merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Pour la, même, pour la modération. C'est Suleiman, merci beaucoup à vous.
thank you very much for this insightful uh, uh, webinar and for your all your work. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So it was very very uh, a special moment to share with with, with you uh, our diamonds, the group of diamonds. For this presentation, leadership presentation it was the second presentation of this uh, congress. So before terminate, for finishing this this presentation, I would like to share with you a, a video of diamonds. If uh, Mr. Yan, you can wait uh, three or four minutes to to see to see this. Uh, sure, I'll be, be honest. Thank you. Thank you very much. Condamné à vivre une vie que tu n'aimes pas. Qu'est-ce qu'on t'a dit que tu veux ou que tu n'es pas Tu es trop jeune. Tu n'as plus l'âge. Tu n'as pas les compétences. Tu n'as pas les ressources. Tu n'es pas capable. Ce n'est pas pour toi. Tu rêves. Et toi Tu y as cru. Mais ce n'est pas vrai. Tu es un diamant à l'état brut. Tu as juste besoin d'être poli pour briller de toutes tes lumières. Tu es un être précieux qui cache sa grande valeur à lui-même et aux autres. Prends conscience de tes potentialités illimitées en transformant ce diamant brut en un diamant taillé et poli. Transforme-toi en ce diamant qui s'indigne et qui est source de lumière. Je suis au cercle des diamants et j'ai un message pour toi. Chaque être humain, 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 chaque être humain est capable de devenir une meilleure version de lui-même tout en restant critique. Rejoins-nous au cercle diamant et tu trouveras des citoyens ou en présentiel. Tu auras accès à des formations en soft skills grâce à une plateforme d'experts. Des experts qui partagent les mêmes valeurs que toi. Partage. Esprit d'équipe, esprit positif, compétence, engagement, agilité. Au cercle des diamants, nous agissons avec simplicité. C'est plaisir. Nous cultivons l'esprit positif, la gratitude, la reconnaissance, le non-jugement. Nous agissons avec bienveillance. Originalité, créativité, professionnalisme, proactivité. Au cercle des diamants, nous croyons en la force du leadership, l'intégrité. Nous avançons avec souplesse, adaptabilité, transparence, authenticité. Au cercle des diamants, nous y croyons, car tous ensemble, nous y arrivons. Inch'Allah. On ne lâche rien. Don't give up. Non, c'est abandonné. Même fait Kinch. Je suis un diamant. I'm a diamond. Soy un diamante. Un Hermès. Nesh. Hermès. Nous sommes le cercle des diamants. Le cercle des diamants. 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 Le cercle des diamants. Si ce message t'inspire, si tu te sens identifié, si toi aussi tu veux faire partie du changement, c'est le moment de rejoindre le cercle des diamants. So thank you all.
one more time, thank you, Jan, for uh, for your presentation, and hope to see you again uh, in Morocco. In Morocco, <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. I look forward to that. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> I enjoyed my last visit very much. It was great. Thank you. Okay. Very well, much. talking of which, I have to now go and get my second vaccination. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Thank you. Take care. Bye. 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 Cher Diamant, cher invité, merci pour votre présence ce soir à cette conférence exceptionnelle autour du leadership qui a été animée par Monsieur Yann Dawson. Et nous remercions vivement euh, et bien entendu avec la, la présence exceptionnelle de Fatem Zara qui, euh, qui assurait donc l'introduction. Sans oublier Akram, Akram qui, euh, qui grâce à lui nous assurons une large diffusion de nos conférences à travers les autres réseaux, à savoir au niveau de, de LinkedIn, au niveau de Facebook, ainsi qu'au niveau de YouTube. Chers diamants, chers invités, demain, nous avons une autre conférence dans le cadre de ce congrès. Ça sera à 20 h comme aujourd'hui, sur la thématique des soft skills. Et elle sera animée par le conférencier international Benoît Chalifoux, je vous donne rendez-vous demain à 20h. Soyez au rendez-vous. Je vous rappelle que ce sont des conférences et c'est un congrès que nous avons, voulu, nous avons voulu le faire gratuitement pour en faire profiter un maximum de personnes. Donc, profitez-en, parlez-en autour de vous. Pour les personnes qui ne sont pas inscrites, qu'elles s'inscrivent et profitez au maximum des deux jours qui nous restent, étant donné que notre congrès se terminera samedi soir, Inch'Allah. Merci à vous tous. Je vous souhaite une excellente soirée. Prenez soin de vous et à demain soir, Inch'Allah. Inch'Allah. Bonsoir. Au revoir. Au revoir, c'est Hassan. Au revoir, c'est Sleiman. Au revoir, c'est Akram. 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 Au revoir, c